Again, welcome to DSRT 734 class. This lecture is covered discrete random variables. As we all know, again, a discrete random variable is based on counting. Then we have continuous random variable, which is based on measurements. So here we see a discrete probability distribution consists of all the possible values of the discrete random variable along with their associated probabilities. A discrete probability distribution always have two characteristics. That is the sum of all of the probabilities must equal to one. And also the probability of any value must be between zero and one inclusively. So let's see our first example. Here they say we should consider the random phenomenon of tossing a coin three times and counting the number of eggs. What is the probability distribution for the number of eggs observed in three tosses of a coin? So here, our random variable is discrete because it's based on counting. We are going to count the number of eggs when we toss a coin three times. So the random variable is x equal to the number of eggs in three tosses of a coin. So this is our possible combination. Now we know every time we toss a coin, we have two outcome, head and tail. And now we are going to toss it three times. So it will be two to the power three, which will give us a possible combination of eight. So that's why we have one divided by eight, three divided by eight, because the possible combination of tossing a coin three times and the outcome is head and tail will be eight possible combinations. So our number of eggs, which represent our random variable, is x. Zero means there's a possibility that when we toss the coin three times, there will be no heads. And that represents when x equal to zero. And that will give us TTT. We toss the coin three times and we get three tails. It's only one outcome for that. So it will be one, the probability will be one over eight. Now, what if we are getting only one head when s equal to one? Here it means we have head, tail, 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 head, tail, 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 head. So it's possible outcome is three. The total is eight. So the probability will be three divided by eight. Also, what is the possible probability of getting S equal to two? The number of S will be two. That means we get head, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head. So that's also three. So it will be three by eight. That is the probability. Then the probability of getting all the three tosses as a head is only one when we have head, head, head. So when we had all the probability according to our characteristics, the probability value should be between zero and one inclusively. And also the sum of all the probability should be one. So if we had all the one by eight plus three by eight plus three by eight plus one by eight, the answer is one. So here we say the probabilities given above can be deduced using a classical approach to probabilities. Now let's see the second example. KJ Johnson is a computer salesperson. During the last year, he has kept a record of his computer sales for the last 200 days. And this is our data. So when we had the frequency, we get 40 plus 20 is 60 plus 60 is 120, plus 40, 160 plus 40, 200. So that's the, what the question said. Uh, John, John C. kept record of his computer sales for the last 200 days. So the frequency represents the number of days. Now, he recognized, he recognized that his daily cells constitute a random process. And also he wishes to determine the probability distribution for daily cells. From the probability distribution, it would like to determine the following. So one, let's find the probability that it will sell at least two computers each day. Also the probability it will sell at least at most two computers. So we are looking for the probability of selling at least two computers and at most two computers. So when we look at the table here, this means these are the cells, zero computer, one, two, three, four. So we are going to look for the probability of at least selling two computers will be two, three, four. At most two computers will be zero, one, two. So we need to look for the probability of each cells. So this means 
the random variable x represent the number of computers sold each day. So the probability for this random variable are computed in the following table based on 200 days. As we said, when we had all the frequency is 200 days of sales data obtained from Mr. Johnson records using the relative frequency concept. So zero, how many we have 40. So we divide 40 by 200 because the total frequency or the days is 200. From the table, also one computer sold for 20 days. So 20 divided by 200. Two computers for 60. So 60 divided by 200. Three computers for 40. 40 divided by 200. Two computers, four computers for 40. 40 divided by 200. Again, we are looking at this, solving these probabilities based on information given to us here. So this is the question again. The cells is zero. Why the frequency is 40. The total frequency is 200. So when cells is zero, it will be 40 divided by 200. When cells is one, 20 divided by 200. When cells is two, 60 divided by 200. When cells is three, 40 divided by 200. And when cells is four, again, 40 divided by 200. Now, when we had all the probability values, we are going to get one. So now our first question said, what is the probability that Mr. Johnson will sell at least two computers? So it will be from two, three, four. The maximum is four computers. So this means we are going to add the probability of two plus probability of three plus probability of four. So the condition is, what is the probability that S is greater than two or equal to two? And the maximum we can go is four. So probability of S equal to two plus probability of X equal to three plus probability of S equal to four. We plug in the values and the answer is 0. 0.7. Now our second question says, the probability that Mr. Johnson will sell at most two computers, it means we are going to add the probability of zero plus probability of one plus probability of two. So our condition will be probability of X is less than or equal to two. And that gives us probability of X equal to zero plus probability of X equal to one plus probability of S equal to two. So we had the answers and we get 0. 0.6. Example three, an investor has decided that she will purchase a stock if there is at least a 50% chance that the price of the stock will be more than $32 in 30 days. Assuming the price of the stock 30 days from now is described in the table below, should the investor purchase the stock? So this is the stock price table. Uh, when S is 30, the probability is 0 0.05. 30.5 is 0 0.1, 31.2, 31.5, 0.25, 32.2, 32.5, 0 0.15. And 33.0 is 0 0.05. So our question is, so our question again said, assuming the price of the stock 30 days from now is described below in the table here, should the investor purchase the stock? So the solution here is that our random variable X will be the price of the stock 30 days hence. That is the main condition. Now, based on the probability distribution, the probability that the stock price will be more than $32 in 32 days is calculated as following. So here we say probability that X is greater than 32. So when we look at the table, we have probability of S greater than 32, we have 32.5, and also we have 33.0. This two data is given to us because the X represents the stock price. Our question saying that assuming the price of the stock 30 days from now is described below, and the chance that the price of the stock will be more than 32, we have only 32.0 here, 
uh, more than 32. So 32.0 will be excluded. So we have only 32.5 and 33. So the probability value is given to us 0 0.15 and 0 0.05. So here we'll say that the probability that S is greater than 32 will be probability of X equal to 32.5 and also plus probability that S equal to 33. Got the condition again said, the price is over $32. So based on the table, these are the only two probabilities. And that's 0 0.15 plus 0 0.05. And that gives us 0 0.20. So since now the probability that the price of stock will be more than $32 in, 32, in 30 days is only 20%, the investor should not purchase the stock. Again, this question is very straightforward because when we look at the table, the probability values are given to us. Well, I want to purchase a stock and the price should be more than $32. Is the probability that the price will be more than $32? 0.15 and 0 0.05, so total is 0 0.20. Now, if we say more than $31, then we can have 0.25 plus 0 0.20, which will give us 0 0.45, plus 0 0.15, which will give us 0 0.60, and plus 0 0.05, which will give us 0.65. So we can say maybe it's better, 65% chance. So let's go to the next example. So next will be the probability distribution function. Now we say each of the discrete distribution possesses a probability distribution function. And these functions assign probabilities to each value of the random variable. As we saw in our previous example, each price of the stock have its own probability. And the whole table will be representing probability distribution function. So the following function is a discrete probability distribution function. We say probability of X equal to S is given as S square over 30, if S is one, two, three, four, X is zero. You can see uppercase X equal to lowercase X. So to look for probability that X equal to two, I will substitute the two here. So I'll get two square divided by 30, which will give me four over 30. Probability that S equal to four, it will be four square divided by 30. Now, probability of S equal to 5, it will be 0. Or S equal to 20, it will be 0. That's the condition given here. Probability of S equal to X, which equal to S divided by 30, if S equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. If not, then the probability is 0. So let's summarize the probability distribution for this function. As we said, to determine the probability for a value, we are going to use the value as the argument to the function. So for example, if we want to determine that the probability of S equal to three, then we get three squared divided by 30, which will give us 90 by 30. Now probability that S equal to four can be calculated also substitute S for four. So it to be four squared, divided by 30, which will give a 16 divided by 30. Now, this is the example given here, probability distribution. When S equal to one, one squared divided by 30, 30 will give me one over 30. When S is two, it will be two squared divided by 30, which will give me four over 30. When S is three, it will be three squared divided by 30, which will give me nine over 30. When S is four, it will be four square, which will give me 16 divided by 30. Now, if we had all these probabilities, the answer will be one. So here they say we should note that the distribution process possesses the essential properties of all probability distribution. That is the probability sum to one and all the probabilities are between zero and one. So again, the probability sum is one, and also all the values of the probabilities are between zero and one. So let's move to the next topic. How do we find the expected value of a 
So expected value of, of the random variable x is the mean of the random variable x. And normally is donated as e at x. And the formula will be each x value times its probability and the sum of all of them. So the mu equal to e at x equal to the sum of x value times its probability. So which means, let's go back to this table. If I'm going to find expected x here, it will be 1 times 1 over 30 plus 2 times 4 over 30 plus 3 times 9 over 30 plus 4 times 16 over 30. And that will give me the expected value. Or we may use the term the mean. So example is given. Suppose you are confronted with two investment alternatives that possess uncertain outcome described by the probability distributions given the table on the next slide. Which option should you choose? So let's see. We have our first invest and the investment alternatives, option one and option two. Now we have the profits in dollars and their probabilities. So this means let's find the average or the expected value for option one and option two. And that's what we did here. So it will be negative 200 times 0 0.02 plus 0 times 0 0.1 plus 1,000 times 0 0.3 plus 2,000 times 0.3 plus 4,000 times 0.1. So we multiply each value x and its probability and we sum all this gives us nine hundred dollars let's do the second one negative three thousand times point two plus negative one thousand <coughs> excuse me negative one thousand which is its probability is point one then two thousand times point two plus three thousand times point three four thousand times point two Again, that's the formula here, xb times probability of xb, and the sum of all of them. So negative 3,000 times 0 0.2 plus negative 1,000 times 0 0.1 plus 2,000 times 0 0.2 plus 3,000 times 0 0.3. So this, this gives us 1,400. So we can see the difference. We have 9,000, also we have 1,400. So because of the randomness of profit variable, it is difficult to evaluate the investment by merely highballing the two distributions. But however, by calculating the expected values of the two alternatives, the information in each distribution is condensed to single value. Now, this value characterizes the center of the distribution and also facilitates comparison. So we saw that the expected value of option A and B are 900 and 1,400 respectively. So there's a difference of 500 will be more profitable. So we are going to choose option B. Now let's look at the second and next example five. Here we say the phrase in the long run is a significant qualifier. It means that under repeated investment with the same profit and probability structure, you will receive an average profit of 1,400 from option B. But on any one investment in Ocean B, you may lose as much as 3,000 or make as much as 4,000. Now let's go to the next and our last topic, variance and standard deviation of discrete random variable. Now to find the variance of a discrete random variable is giving us the difference of each S value minus the mean all square times the probability of the x. Then the square root of the variance will give us the standard deviation. And also here, we should note that sometimes it is easier to calculate the variance of discrete random variable using the computational formula, s square times probability of s minus the mu square. Either way, you get the same. So both formulas are equivalent. So we can say x minus mu all square 
times probability of x, or we can say s squared times probability of x minus mu squared. We sum everything. So first of all, we have to sum s squared times probability of x. When we finish, all the values sum all together, then we subtract from the mean. Or we can do individually, subtract each x from the mean square, then you multiply by the probability of that x. Either way, you get the same answer. So our last example, here they say the calculation of the variances for the random variable described in example five. We are going to use it to find the variance and also the standard deviation. So this is the option A. We saw the profit in dollars and also their probabilities. So our goal here again, we are doing, we are using the X minus mu or square times P at X, which will give us the variance. Or as we said, we can say the sum of X square times the P, P at X minus the mu square. Either formula will work. Let's go back again. So we can use this formula, S square, times P at S, the sum of all, then we subtract mu square from it. Or oh, this is the formula we are using now. Each S minus the mean, we square it, then we times the probability of X. Again, both formulas are equivalent. And that's what we are using the first formula. So S minus mu all square probability of X. So the mu is 900 from option A. And we can remember the option B, the mu was 1,400. So we can see we subtract 900 from each S values, the profits. We square it, then we multiply by its probabilities, each profit probabilities. Then when we finish, again, we sum all. So we get our final answer to be 3 million uh, 90,000. So the standard deviations is computed by taking the square root of the variance. So the square root of 3,090,000 will give me 1757.8. Now with the option B, we know the mean was 1,400. So we subtract 1,400 from each profit. We square it and multiply by each probability values. Then we sum everything. We get 6 million. 640,000. So the standard deviation will be square root of it, which will give us again 2576.8. So that will be the conclusion of our lectures. Again, these lectures, we focus on the discrete random variable. First, we learn how to find the probabilities, the discrete probability distributions, the expected value, the variance, and also the standard deviations. Again, thank you for your time and see you in the next lectures.